better, faster, stronger. If you want the best pal there is, then you're going to genetically engineer them using breeding in pal world. This is super efficient, whether it's for a base pal so that they work much faster, your favorite exploration mount buddy so that they run faster, or your combat pet so that it can kill things twice as gooder. But breeding is a little bit tricky. In fact, it's probably the most complicated mechanic in pal world outside of pals themselves. So buckle in as I go over the basics and talk about some of the ways that I've utilized breeding. Also, if you want to know my thoughts on Pal World as a whole, or get some more tips and tricks that I've learned over my 100 hours playing, do be sure to get subscribed, leave a like while you're down there, and without further ado, let's get into breeding. Okay, so let's start with the basics. How do you breed pals in Pal World? Step one is building a breeding farm. This requires 100 wood, 20 stone, 50 fiber, and you need to be level 19 to unlock it. You'll probably want to build two, three, or even four if you can fit them into your base. They're quite space intensive, but absolutely worth it, since the more pals that you can have breeding, the more eggs you can get, and the faster you can hatch them. To do this, you'll need a male pal, a female pal, don't worry, every pal can be male or female, despite what their anatomy might otherwise suggest, and then cake, because there's no romance without cake. And to bake a cake, you're going to need some flour, eggs, honey, milk, and berries. You should have more than enough berries, and if you're growing wheat, flour is easy as well. Eggs, milk, and honey take a little bit more work. Eggs come from chickpea, and chickpea seems like they're not very good at laying eggs, so you'll probably want a couple, and ideally they should have the artisan perk for increased work speed. This is done if a ranch. Honey come from bee guard, which loves to blow itself up, and you'll need to catch one to be able to continue with this process. But once your bee guard is happy if a ranch producing honey, you're good on that as well. For milk, grab that moose arena, and if you want to know where to get one, don't worry, I have a guide that talks about great early game pals, which goes into exactly where to find moose arena. I'll link it for you later. You want to put that bad boy in the ranch? There you go. Endless milk. Now we're ready to bake some cakes. And to bake cake, you want a pal with kindling. Personally, I'd recommend Wixen early on, but ideally you want to upgrade to something like Blaze Howl that does it much faster. Also, the best cooking device that you can use is ideal here, since cake requires quite a lot of work to make. I mean, personally, I can't bake a cake in real life, so I can completely understand this. But again, I can't do a lot of things that pals can do, though, so maybe they should just be better at their job. Step three, though, is where things get complicated. You need to actually breed things, and to do that, you need a plan. So, for example, a simple problem you might have is, oh, I haven't found this pal yet. I've encountered it, but I haven't captured it. Maybe because it's too high level, like, let's just say Anubis. Well, what do I want to do? I want to breed myself an Anubis, in which case you can absolutely do that. There's a lot of relatively easy to catch pals that make Anubis. And for that, I'm going to come over to a website that I've been using that I've found super, super helpful, which is essentially a Pal World breeding calculator. So here we have the Pal World GG breeding calculator, which I've found super, super helpful. Let's say you wanted to make Anubis. You can select it here, then find all combinations. This is all the combinations of pals that you need to potentially breed yourself an Anubis. And oh boy, are there a lot of combinations. Now, some of these you're probably not going to have. For example, Menestate. They're a really high level pal, difficult to get outside of breeding. On the other hand, Bushi, pretty low level. You can get him in the early 20s. And Cinemoth, they're everywhere. So Bushi plus Cinemoth equals Anubis. Or alternatively, what else is there? Pen King plus Bushi. Pen King's easy to get. You should be able to do that, no problem. Now, let's say Orzerk, Verdash, really hard combo. Astgon, Verdash, really hard combo. Skip over them. Maybe you have a Rayhound. Well, Rayhound plus Sweepa. Masanda plus Catrus. That's totally doable. Maybe Tombat plus Sweepa. I think you can do that right around level 19. There's so many different combos here, and a lot of them include very common, easy to farm pals. Therefore, if you want an Anubis, it's quite easy to get. But realistically, you're not going to use breeding just to get an Anubis. You want an Anubis with good traits. For example, on your base pals, you'll want something like Work Slave, Artisan, or Sirius. Swift and Lucky are also pretty okay, but not necessarily the thing that you want. On Exploration Pals, Swift and Runner increase that move speed as much as possible, though bonuses to attack and defense are also good. 
on combat pals, you probably want Ferocious and Musclehead to give the biggest damage boost possible, but Swift, Runner, Lucky, even Legendary or Hooligan are also nice. And that's where things get really interesting, because you can select for traits in the pals you combine. Let's take a look at a little practical example. So here are the pals that I currently have on my base, and right now I want a better Jormantide. The Jormantide that I have has Musclehead, but also has Sirius, which isn't that helpful. It'd be really nice to have, ideally, Hooligan, Musclehead, and also something else? Or maybe just Musclehead Ferocious, get all the damage, add in a third thing if I can. So I've got a Jormantide with Musclehead. That's really good. I also have a female Jormantide with both Lucky and Ferocious. Lucky usually spawns on Lucky or Shiny Pals, but you can breed it onto anything. So a child pal is very likely to inherit traits from both of its parents. This means that any children from these two Jormantides are quite likely to have Lucky, Ferocious, and Musclehead. But unfortunately, it is a little bit RNG. And so you're going to need a lot of cake and a lot of time. In fact, when I say a lot of time, I don't just mean a lot of time in the game sense of like literal in-game days. I mean real world time, because by default, these eggs take two hours to hatch. You can increase this through two ways. The first is via gameplay. Do this by picking a right location for your base or artificially changing the base's temperature. Some eggs like to be hot. Others like to be cold. If you keep them nice and happy, they're gonna hatch faster. But alternatively, you could take things in the other direction and artificially change the hatch time to make it go faster. You do this from the game's settings menu. So let's just return to title for a second. Then we select start game. This nice solo world, change world settings, custom settings. Come down here. Now I have it on one hour because I don't want all of my eggs to just cycle instantaneously, constantly. That feels a little bit cheap to me personally. That said, if you want to, I'm not judging you. Honestly, you kind of have to leave a game running for a really long time. I've been exploring, fighting stuff, killing, progressing, so I don't mind. But if you're not doing that, I don't blame you at all if you set this down to zero. Or maybe you want breeding to be really slow and inefficient, and you said it's like 16 hours. That's 16 hours in-game. Or in the real world, I should say. Now at zero? I hit OK, I hit Confirm, and I load back into the world. Watch what happens when I now interact with the eggs. Nothing's changed, or has it? So I'm just going to do this one since it's almost done. I'm just going to go in, take the egg out, put it back. All of a sudden, it's done. That's right, it instantly completes because the time has been set to zero. I hatched it and I got an Orzerk, a super rare pal with all the traits that I want. That's going to be an awesome party member. Don't worry, there's plenty of other failed Orzerks that I've hatched or I'm going to hatch. They'll just all go in the grinder known as the Pal Condenser. Since you need 4, 16, 32, and I believe it's 64 copies of whatever pals to really max them out, having extras is no problem. Now, I've hatched over 100 pal eggs, and... I can't be 100% sure how it behaves. So far, what I think is A, if you have a bunch of extra traits, those just muddy the pool and make it more difficult to get what you want. You should always go for the minimal approach. And number two, I've had much greater success when trying to transfer two single traits from parents to a double on a child or two double traits to four on parents. So I already went into a little bit on how you might make Anubis, but what if you wanted something like the endgame mount Phalaris or Thaleris? This is a very rare pet, and it requires Anubis plus Vanworm. How would you go about breeding that or setting yourself up for success? Well, here we are back at the old breeding calculator. The first thing you'd do is you'd want to go through this entire list, and you'd want to look for two pals that you already have with good traits. Let's just say you happen to have a good Serpent and a good Incineram. The Incineram has, oh, I don't know, maybe Swift. And the Serpent has Lucky. You can combine those and you will get a Swift Lucky Anubis. And you want to breed your Incineram and your Serpent over and over and over again until you get that Swift Lucky Anubis. Now, that's half of a battle. The other half is Vanworm. 
Van worm is very, very common. You don't actually need to breed a good van worm. You can just go out and catch van worm after van worm after van worm until you get one with ferocious. Or alternatively, maybe you want runner. Maybe you want both. Well, both is a little harder. Both you'd probably want to use breeding. And so for that, you'd again go to this list and, I don't know, look through all of these. Maybe you have something like a Gale Claw and a Relaxorus, but Relaxorus tends to have glutton and that muddies the pool, so don't use Relaxorus. Keep going down. Oh yeah, you have a really good Dire Howl, but again, Relaxorus, all right. Not so great. Keep going, keep going. Oh, Gobfin and Beacon. Well, you have those two. They have the traits that you want. You breed them together. You now have a Van Worm with two of the traits you want, and an Anubis with two of the traits you want. And guess what? Anubis plus Van Worm equals your end goal, Phalaris. This way it has the highest chance of inheriting, let's just say, the Runner, so it goes faster, the Swift, so it goes faster, Lucky for damage, and Ferocious for damage. This works for any of the traits that you have, Personally, I wouldn't actually advise chasing four like that. I'd go for something like an Anubis that has Swift Runner fast as possible, and then just grab either Ferocious or Lucky from your Van Worm, just because I found it's way easier to breed into three total traits than it is to breed into four total. But if you're going for perfect pals, and especially if you want the legendary trait that's exclusive to legendaries, well, I guess that should have been obvious, like Frost Stallion, at Super Endgame, once you're level 50, you're able to capture level 50 pals, then it's absolutely worth going for those perfect four traits. Now, another example of this is looking for links where multiple pals can be bred from one parent. And a good example of this is found with Shadowbeak. Shadowbeak is a pretty darn rare pal, pretty much exclusively confined to the end game. And they're also very powerful. So if you want to start breeding one, what's the best way to do it? Best way to do it is Jormantide because Jormantide can be used to create multiple parts of the beast. That way you get the highest level of control over the parent traits. I haven't actually done this successfully yet. I've just started, but here are a few of my attempts. So I have a couple of Shadow Beak attempts, one of which got Musclehead. That's pretty good for future breeding. One of which has a bunch of junk traits, a Swift Musclehead, okay. If I'm using it as a mount, that's not quite ideal. And a Runner Swift. So now, if I combined the female Runner Swift with a male that had something like Ferocious and Musclehead, I'd be in a really good spot. Luckily for me, I happen to have the exact Jormantide somewhere around here for the job. I say somewhere, ah, there we go. Female Jormantide with Ferocious and Musclehead. Now, what I need to do is breed two different pals with this. The first is Kitsun. The second is Astagon. Here's an example of a male Kitsun, and here's an example of another Kitsun. And then Astagon is over in the dragon section. Here we go. Because Kitsun plus Astagon equals Shadow Beak. Also, Shadow Beak plus Shadow Beak equals Shadow Beak. So now I have to get the other remaining part for my Jormantide. With that, let's go back to the website. So here you can see, Kitsun, Astagon, Shadowbeak. But here's the interesting part. Since I know what trait I want, I know where to get it from my Jormantide, all I have to do is look through this entire list for all the combinations with Jormantide. Turns out it's Suzaku Aqua and Blazamut. So I'd need to capture or breed one of these two which, uh, fun fact, guess what Suzaku Aqua does? Yep, it's Jormantide plus Suzaku. So now if I have a Suzaku, I can breed it into Suzaku Aqua, hopefully pass along some of the traits, then breed the Suzaku Aqua back with the Jormantide for an even higher chance of passing along the traits, and I get one half of the equation. Kitson, on the other hand, big old list. And here we have a way to make Kitson with Pengullet plus Jormantide. Pengullet is relatively common, so you go out, you catch one with a desirable trait or no trait at all, breed them together until you get two traits that you want, then you'll have your Kitsun and your Astagon, which you can use to make the Shadow Beak. That's how I made the Shadow Beak with the Runner and the Swift. 
if I want to turn it into an ultimate mount, I'm ever going to breed for Lucky, Ferocious, or Musclehead. I could in theory go for Legendary, but I don't have any of the Legendary pals yet, so that's kind of out of the question. Lousy's right, and now you have all the tools you need to build your genetically superior pal army. Oh, if only it was that easy. Because here's a problem. There's also an IV system in Pal World. So here we have a Runner, Swift, Workaholic, Vanworm. And a Runner, Swift, Zen Mind, Nimble. Then just a Swift Runner. Their traits aren't really modifying things like attack, defense, and health. And yet, this Vanworm has 111 attack. This one has 109. And this one has 110. The one with 110 attack has 558 health and 58 defense. Whereas this one has a mere 57 defense. And this one, the same 57 defense, but he also only has 551 health. Or, sorry, she. My bad. This is the problem with breeding in Pal World, because the IVs control how much they gain every single time they level up. So, if you have a perfect Pal, you also need not only all the best traits, but also the best IVs, then enhance them with Pal Souls, then you condense a ton of Pals onto them, and yeah, you're probably going to spend a year of in-game time and possibly a year in real life to make the perfect Pal. In general, I found breeding to be absolutely invaluable. It's gotten me the strongest pals that I've been able to use so far and allowed me to absolutely crush things that are around my level or things even several levels above myself that happen to be weak to a type that I'm delivering damage on. Personally, I think the two pals that you absolutely should breed as soon as possible are Jormantide and Anubis, simply because they're utilized in so many endgame combinations and they end up being very effective. Uh, with that said, Pal World overall isn't a super, super challenging game, and if you just want to do the pet collection thing and go for pals that you enjoy, that's totally fine as well. Plus, in this video, I was talking more about combat applications, but there's plenty of applications for base building as well. You could do things like breed a blaze howl that's super good at kindling with both artisan and a different worker trait like work slave. Or alternatively, you could breed your Jormantide to have, well, Sirius plus artisan, making it far more effective at the watering task. Don't worry, if you end up with spares, again, they'll just go into the pal condenser or they can be sold to a merchant. Now, personally, I put my merchant in a legally distinct Pokeball so that I was able to pull him out whenever I needed and sell him all my spare pals that don't get condensed. Though I've also found that on multiplayer servers, this doesn't seem to work, or at least it doesn't on my friend's multiplayer server. So your experiences may vary in that regard. But that's everything that I wanted to talk about today in terms of breeding pals in Pal World. And so now I'm curious, if you've already started pal breeding, what are some of the must-haves that you would say are great to build up to use as breeding stock to make lots of other pals? And if you haven't started breeding yet, what pal do you most want and which traits do you want on it? Be sure to let me know down in the comments below. Now, if you're looking to watch something else, I did talk about some basic pals that are really helpful in the early and mid game, the pal that actually carried me into the end game, and some ideal locations for your base. So I'll link to all of those videos up in the card or down below. And with that said, I'd like to take a moment to thank my patrons and channel members for the continued support. Ad rates in quarter one are really bad, and this year is way worse than usual, to the point where, optimally, I probably should just be streaming over on Twitch and not making videos at all. But I've had a lot of fun with Pal World, and I wanted to share that with you, and I'm able to do that in part due to the direct support from patrons and channel members. So if you want to be part of making videos like this possible, do support using the link below. With that said, thank you very much for watching to the end. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you again sometime soon.